What are nursing mnemonics? Let's talk about nursing mnemonics. Many of you may be wondering what they are in general and how they may fit into your nursing journey. A nursing mnemonic is a memory aid or technique used to assist nursing students in recalling and retaining important information related to various aspects, such as anatomy, pharmacology, procedures, disease processes, assessments, and more. Mnemonics typically involve creating acronyms, catchy phrases, visual associations, or other creative devices to simplify complex concepts and make them easier to remember. If you still have any doubts, here are five reasons why nursing mnemonics can be extremely helpful for studying and preparing for nursing school exams and the NCLEX. One, retention and recall. Mnemonics help improve your ability to remember important information. Two, organization and categorization. Mnemonics can help you organize and categorize large amounts of information. Three, simplification of complex concepts. Nursing mnemonics simplify complex concepts by breaking them down into smaller, more manageable parts. Four, application of critical thinking. Nursing mnemonics often incorporate critical thinking strategies, such as prioritization, assessment, and decision-making. Five, the quick reference during exams. Mnemonics offer a quick reference during exams, allowing you to recall information on the spot. Get ready to discover creative memory aids that will make your nursing school journey a whole lot easier and more enjoyable. Now that we've talked about what nursing mnemonics are and why they are important, let's dive into five of the most commonly used mnemonics on nursing.com. This mnemonic is, I have a right to camp if you left off the AC. Use this mnemonic to remember all the structure of the coronary arteries. There is right and left. So I have a right to camp, C-A-M-P, if you left, which is the left side, off the AC. So let's go through these. So on the right side, there are three main ones. You've got the coronary artery, the marginal artery, and the posterior artery. Here's how you remember. CA, which is a coronary artery, also makes up the first part of this mnemonic, which is CAMP. So the right CA coronary artery. Then you have the M, which is the marginal artery. Then you have P, the posterior intraventricular artery. Now, I have a right to CAMP if you left off the AC. So let's look at the left side of the heart. So you have left, which is the A, and you have the anterior descending artery, and then you have C, which is a circumflex artery. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. We're gonna take a look at the trauma assessment in the emergency department. In the emergency department, there's always a rapid assessment and you have to have a level of treatment for the trauma patient and that's essential for their overall survival. So working through this framework, that's gonna help you to remember where to focus your effort. So let's take a look at the nursing mnemonic, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So A stands for airway, just like we always. We wanna make sure that airway is patent and open. B stands for breathing. We want to make sure our patient is breathing before moving on to any other interventions. C stands for circulation. You always want to make sure that your patient has blood circulating. D is for disability. You always want to see if your patient has some sort of disability that's impairing them. E stands for expose and examine. This is really important because once you get that first, those first few steps down, you need to make sure that your patient does, doesn't have any sort of other injury. F stands for full set of vitals. You gotta get a whole set of vitals. Temperature, heart rate, respiration rate. Um, the more information you have there, the better. Don't forget your blood pressure and your MAP. G stands for give comfort measures. If you have a patient who's awake, but they're still in the trauma unit, you need to make sure that they're comfortable. This may be an intervention with pain medication or some other uh, non-pharmacologic pain intervention. H stands for head to toe assessment. What that means is after we've done our ABCs and make sure that our patient has an open airway, is breathing and has circulation, we want them to that entire head to toe assessment. So I stands for inspect posterior. Every time you have a patient come into the trauma bay or into the emergency department, they're usually gonna come in on their back. And that means that sometimes important things are gonna get missed. Once you make sure that your patient has gone through all your ABCs and you've done your head to toe assessment, have your your cohorts or your other, uh, your colleagues help you roll the patient over so you can get a good look at their posterior. We're gonna look at the nursing mnemonic, Rome. And Rome is really important because it helps you to decipher those arterial blood gases. So anytime you have a patient and you get a blood gas back on them, you can actually figure out what's going on with them by using this mnemonic. 
So let's look at the mnemonic. Rome, respiratory, O opposite. So if, the, if it's respiratory related, the pH and the PCO2 are going to be opposite. One's high, one's low. The next two are M and E. If it's metabolic related, they're actually going to be equal. So if the pH is low, the bicarb is also going to be low. So they're equal. When we're dealing with mnemonics, you need to know what signs and symptoms you should be looking for with your patients who are experiencing hyperkalemia or high potassium. So what are we looking for? Let's look at the mnemonic murder. M stands for muscle weakness. Potassium is really important in muscle contractions, so you have to constantly keep an eye out for your patient's muscle contractility. U stands for urine. For patients that are experiencing hyperkalemia, they may have decreased urine output called oliguria or anuria, which is no urine production. R stands for respiratory distress. Patients that have high levels of potassium could experience some level of respiratory distress. D stands for decreased contractility of the heart. We want to keep an eye on that heart and make sure that it's still appropriately squeezing and getting all the blood where it needs to go. E stands for EKG changes. What we want to look for on that EKG is a peak T wave. At the end of the QRS complex, that T wave is going to be higher than normal. That last R stands for reflexes. Well, what does that mean? Anytime we're dealing with a patient that has hyperkalemia, we want to check reflexes. We want to check either elbows or the patellar reflexes. We're looking for a sign or symptom such as um, hyper or hyporeflexia, meaning that anytime you check that reflex, it's either going to excessively respond or it may not even respond at all. Now we're gonna take a look at the mnemonic for sludge. And what sludge is, is it's a mnemonic to help you remember how to take care of your patients and what signs and symptoms you are gonna be looking for for your patients that could be going through something called a cholinergic crisis. S stands for salivation. In your patients that have excessive acetylcholine, they're going to over salivate. The next one is L, which is lacrimation or tear production. That means that your patients may be tearing excessively. Now U stands for urination, and what that means is for those patients that are producing too much acetylcholine, they are going to maybe not have as good of urinary bladder control, and they may leak urine or produce excessive urine. Along with D, which stands for defecation, you're gonna see similar symptoms. G stands for gastric upset. For these patients that are going through that cholinergic crisis, they may experience some gastric upset. E stands for emesis. For these patients that are having that excessive acetylcholine production, they may vomit or have more emesis than your normal patient. 